Hi, iFundWomen land. Welcome to iFundWomen live. My name is Olivia Owens and I am the creator and general manager of iFundWomen of Color. Um, today we are celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, I'm going to be joined with Ana Flores, founder of We All Grow Latina, Elisa Molina, founder of Covidosa, and Mary Vet Navarrete, founder of The Mujerista. We're going to have a really great conversation. Um, if you're new to iFund Women, um, iFund Women is the go to funding marketplace for women doing businesses and the people who want to support them with access to capital, coaching, and connections. Um, and the work I do at iFund Women of Color is to accelerate access to capital for women of color entrepreneurs. Um, we have some amazing women in our community who are going to be sharing their experience and expertise. Um, so excited to have them jump in and join. I see some of them um, in the chat already and welcome them in. Well, everybody in the community, thank you for tuning in. This is going to be a really, really great um, conversation, and I'm just so excited to be shining a spotlight on each of these amazing founders. And to kick it off, I'd love to give you each the opportunity to introduce yourself um, and the work that you're doing. Anna, I'm going to go ahead and start with you. Sure. Um, so I'm Ana Flores. I am the founder and CEO of We All Grow Latina, where we're on a mission of elevating the voices and stories of Latinas via the power of community. And we've been doing it since 2010. So we're kind of like the OGs in the space when we've been advocating for Latinas before it was cool to advocate for Latinas. So we're so happy that we're, you know, that finally this is where we're all here together doing this work. Um, we all grow started as Latina Bloggers Connect. We were the first network connecting Latina influencers with brands before influencer marketing even existed. But because for me, it was when I found this medium of blogging and this medium, this digital space, it, I saw clearly that this is where our voices were going to be democratized. We're still going there, but we're using and utilizing all the tools to get there. And now um, the, the company continues to pivot and to change. And in the last few years, um, six years ago, we launched our first summit, We All Grow Summit, which has been on hiatus for the last two years. Um, we're coming back strong next year, though, and we really have com continued to shift to become the community of what we call impactful Latinas, so entrepreneurs and women with the entrepreneurial spirit. I love it. Amazing, amazing. Um, Elisa, I'm going to jump to you next. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. As Anna mentioned, it's just truly a pleasure to be here with each and every one of you, uh, our, our 30 minutes of fame. Yay. My name is Alisa Molina. I am the founder, CEO, and creative director of COVID Dosa, which is a go-to marketplace for women to feel empowered, validated, and confident. And we do this by um, launching um, artist collections that are hand-drawn, uh, limited lifestyle products. And we partner with uh, women artists who identify as Black and or women of color to hand illustrate these designs. So you're always more than welcome to learn about us at covidosa.com and um, follow us on Instagram. Amazing, thank you, Elisa and Mary Vett, last but certainly not least. Thank you, Olivia, and thank you to the iPhone Women team for inviting us here to share our stories and for providing the space for Hispanic and Latinx founders um, to, to be able to tell the stories. Uh, my name is Mariva and I am the founder and CEO of The Mujerista, which is a digital media publication that is uh, dedicated to empowering and sharing the stories of the next generations of Latinas that are making an impact in our culture and our communities. Um, I am a first generation uh, daughter of Nicaraguan immigrants. Um, shout out to my fellow Nicas. And I am proudly here to continue the support of supporting our Latinx founders and Hispanics. Amazing. Um, I'm really excited to have this conversation. So I launched iPhone Women of Color back in January of 2020, um, very intentionally with understanding that A, women of color face unique obstacles when it comes to accessing capital for our businesses. We see the disparity play out across um, many of the traditional funding sources, but also understanding that women of color are not monolithic. Um, and so how are we telling our 
individual stories, how and how naturally we are infusing our identity into the work that we're doing. When I when I talk to um, different uh, people in the space about why women of color are starting businesses, it's it's to solve the prob the solve the problems that we're experiencing ourselves in our lives, and that may not be innovative, this brand new tech device that hasn't existed before, but it's creating solutions with us in mind through our lens, through our experience. And so I'd love to hear from each of you um, how your Latinx or Hispanic cultural or identity has really kind of influenced how you move through entrepreneurship. Um, and Mary Beth, I'll, I'll start back with you on that one. So I guess in every possible way, um, <laughs> especially with our brand being devoted to celebrating Latinidad and amplifying the voices of, of those in our community, um, everything that we do that to further our mission involves of like, what does the community need? What are they searching for? What are they looking for? They, we ask them um, what, what they're looking for as well. And so we try and make sure that, that everything that we do throughout our, our entrepreneurial journey involves our community because that is our goal, that is our mission to amplify our voices um, and to elevate them as well. Um, so so I, I, uh, you know, I, I just want to continue to celebrate that and I think that's how we just move through it. Exactly, spot on. It's, um letting the voices be heard that so often go ignored um, and then letting those voices drive how you move forward. I think that's definitely key. Um, Elisa, I'll go to you next. Yes. I love this question. And I totally agree with um, my amazing colleague. It, 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 absolutely everything. Right. But I think for me, mainly it's my culture has truly helped me um, be continue to become resilient, right. To become a resilient business and, and find ways to overcome the obstacles, the walls that we face on a daily basis as um, Latina entrepreneurs, um, being if it's lack of access to capital, how do we overcome that? How do we get creative to figure out other ways? As I'm sure we're gonna talk about later. Um, if our idea fails the first time, how can we reinvent it the second time? If it fails the second time, how can we reinvent it the third time until it's a hit, right? So I definitely think my culture has just continued to help me um, develop grit and perseverance and also passion. I, I think we Latinos are very passionate people. Anytime I talk to people about Covedos, I'm like, hey, do you hear about, I'm doing this. Yes, that's my website. Absolutely, you need to check this out. These are the artists that we support. So definitely grit, passion and perseverance um, are some of the things that um, I have been able to develop as a result of my culture. Amazing. And um, I just saw somebody in the chat mention, can you talk about some of the obstacles you've endured? And Elisa just mentioned that pivot, that um, perseverance. <laughs> Anna, you've been in the game um, for some time now. So if you could share. It would take an hour just to talk about all those obstacles. Right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. If you could I mean, set, start, shed some light. To start out with, I mean, I, I like to tell people, like, can you imagine me 11 years ago trying to talk to any white man, founder, or anybody and telling like, oh, I have this vision of uniting Latinas. I have this vision of creating a platform for Latinas to speak up and to, and to you know, create our own spaces and create our own tables, etc. I mean, the door was always shut. We were not taken seriously. We're a woman, a Latina woman um, in the middle of the recession, uh, trying, trying to just build a dream. And it really, um, going back to your question about where do, how does our Latinidad come in, it's in every single thing. Um, I started, I went to college um, for TV production. So I was born in Texas, grew up in El Salvador. My parents are from El Salvador. My dad still lives in, in Texas. And I like to tell the story that he actually um, had founded one of the first Latino nightclubs in Houston. So yes. it was La Esmeralda Nightclub. So I come from a family of entrepreneurs and I come from a family that has always celebrated what it, what the Latino and Latinx experience is in the U.S. Um, so for me, it was, it, it was just from the moment I knew that I was going to be I wanted to tell our stories. So my first job was in Univision and then in MTV Latin America in Mexico and then moved to LA to, to, to be, um, one of the, the, the founding group of Mundos, which is now NBC Universal. So always speaking to, to the Latinx communities and the different identities and, and going from youth to really focused on women. And there is just no other thing that I would want to do. And I will, I, I will bet to say that all of us here will agree that it's not the easy road and it's not the easy path. We could all be doing other things um, financially, probably would be much better. But this is what we know that we need to do because it is who we are. And especially women business owners, 
we create from within us and our businesses evolve as we evolve, as we take care of ourselves, we take care of our business. So if our business is really an extension of who we are, then this is who we are fully, fully authentically Latinas. I love it. I love it. Um, and one of the one of the specific obstacles um, that we we've been talking about a bit is access to capital. Um, and so, of course, I Fund Women is a a funding marketplace for women doing businesses uh, to get that access to capital. And both Elisa and Mary Beth both crowdfunded on our platform. Um, I would love to hear from each of you your kind of experience leading up to crowdfunding um, and identifying that as your funding op option and then kind of how you were able to leverage that for your business. Mary Beth, I'll start with you. Yeah, so as Anna said, you know, with our mission of trying to elevate Latina voices, it's not a very easy uh, journey to kind of go through. Um, it's, it's, there's a lot of naysayers and people who don't necessarily believe in the mission. Um, and so having that thought of, okay, let's just move forward with this. Let's keep going. I had been self-funding this for a while um, and was looking to sort of expand on our mission and so we went through a couple of options that were possible the idea of crowdfunding was introduced to me and i you know i was very afraid to 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 jump into it i think we've talked about this before how it in our cultures uh it's very difficult to ask for money you know you're not necessarily taught that that's a good thing you know if you're asking for money it's generally bad um you don't do that you keep that at home um, and so I, that was the initial hurdle that I had to jump through. Um, and after much discussion with the team, and we decided this is the best route for us. You know, we believed so much in our mission and there were so many others in our community that were also uh, feeling that there was importance into what we were doing. And so we decided to seek their support. And sure enough, after some time uh, building out the, the crowdfunding campaign, we started to see the amazing support of those in our community. Um, and so our, our journey, was in the beginning we were just so afraid but once we got into campaign mode it was pretty pretty simple pre pretty easy to just go around um asking uh for those in our community to support our our mission um and i think once people see that you are have been dedicating so much into building out your mission um and that you've been showing that you've been uh, building out this mission people are, are very ready to support you um, because there are not so many platforms especially in the latinx community that are dedicated to empowering especially the women in in our community and so once they see that you're you're building that out they're ready to, to, to support you definitely and i think a key piece there is all of your businesses are dedicated to driving value for your community. And, and once you've driven value, people jump at the opportunity to, to support and help you reach more people and, and amplify and, and keep it going. So um, the fact that you had kind of been in this business for a little bit, you, you built a community around it. Um, and then you actually turned around and shared with your community what you needed. You, you leaned into that vulnerability a little bit um, to pull back the curtain and say, hey, we've been on the way. I've been self-funding this thing. I want to take us to the next level. Here's how we get there. Um, will you join me? I think that's, I think that's huge. Alisa, i um, excited to hear your story. Absolutely. So definitely. Uh, thank you, Marivette, for like, you know, somebody said in the chat for putting uh, those fears into words, right? And really sharing um, how does it feel to, to get started and, and overcome um, that fear of are we going to have people that are going to support us? You know, is our, are our people going to support? And if they don't, how do we manage that response, right? So I would add to that, um, that uh, in terms of my crowdfunding experience, I actually um, had to look towards the path of crowdfunding as a result of COVID. I actually had about two to three months of no revenue. And I was like, oh my God, bills are still coming in. They're still being, you know, I still have to pay for my operational expenses. So before I learned about iPhone women, I crowdfunded via um, GoFundMe and then after, as a result of seeing the results of that and the fact that people were able to support me, I went ahead and that same year launched a crowdfunding campaign through iFund Women um, because that particular experience gave me the strength and gave me the hope that I can do this and I can continue to seek for support through my community. And I'm really, really thankful for that. And, you know, um, I think some people were asking, you know, uh, so I was able to raise over a thousand dollars through Icon Women. And then as a result of my crowdfunding campaign, I was able to qualify for other amazing, great opportunities that helped me achieve my 
financial goals to keep over those afloat. So truly overcoming that fear of um, you're going to have stories in your head that say, this may not be right. Oh, this has to be, the design has to be perfect. This has to be perfect, right? So my biggest advice would be, and what I've learned is, I actually launched my campaign and I even made edits to the design of it during the campaign process. So it's okay for you to start and launch it with what you have. And you, it's totally okay to also make improvements, add additional rewards that you come up with later on, and also change the format of that particular um, uh, campaign. So it just, just get started. It's really my biggest advice. Yeah, I, I love it. Oh, go ahead. No, go for it. <laughs> I was going to say that I think that's basically what, what you learn as you're, you're, you're um, on your crowdfunding journey is you can't be afraid, whether it's afraid to start or to make the ask or to go back and, and change up things that might not be working. I, you know, it's, it's evergreen, I like to say. And, and people, again, uh, they're more than happy to provide you with resources or share your information to others if they can't support it financially um, or to just kind of go through your crowdfunding and be like hey you might want to change the wording on this it happened so many times for us um, and it was it, it kind of reinforced the idea that we had that people really want to see us succeed and that the, there was a need in the space for something that like what we were building absolutely a couple things that I want to double click on in there is first and foremost um, some tips when it comes to crowdfunding. Think really thoughtfully about your goal. Mary Beth, how much did you raise? We raised a little over uh, 10,000. Um, so it was around $12,000. Our Perfect. goal and then, actually oh. was a little bit higher. And then we actually went back after talking with the team um, and lowered our, our uh, crowdfunding goal to $10,000. And Elisa, how much was yours? A, I raised uh, $1,278. And yeah. so... Yes. And then went on to win grants through iFundWomen by being on the platform. And so I, I want to double click on that because you, like they're saying, you have to start somewhere um, and getting out there and, and adding visibility to the work that you're doing is really important. Another piece um, that I want to highlight is we actually, Caress was the founding partner of iFundWomen of Color for our October monthly pay it forward. They're doing eight grants and coaching scholarships for Hispanic and Latinx crowdfunders on our platform. So when we say get started, I mean, get started. Uh, make sure you get your campaign up before the end of the month. Start raising funds so you can be in the running for that. But that's how that visibility gives you access to additional opportunity versus being in your head, trying to make it perfect before you even put it out there. So um, if you're on the line right now, if you've been thinking about crowdfunding, now is the time to do it push it out, start raising some funds so that you can be in the running for that October pay it forward and get some, some coaching and some cash for your business. Um, Anna, I want to, I want to bring it to you um, to, to hear a little bit about your funding journey and, and how you've navigated over the years um, the, the capital side of your business. Yeah. So first of all, I want to say congratulations to Lisa and Marivette. I know it's not easy unless, and like Marivette was saying, it is really difficult for us to ask for money. And I know that's always been and still continues to be my journey. And I feel that even launching with a crowdfunding campaign, um, you know, hand in hand with you and, and I find women of color and the coaches is a fabulous way to also shift the energy and put yourself in the receiving mode to really learn to receive because I think that's, that's the hard part. It's, it's sometimes not, it's not as hard to ask, but it's that allowing ourselves to be the receivers, right, to come from that place of worth and of value. So that's why it's so many other things open up. So for me, it was it was definitely self funded. And I have to say that that's not money from parents. That's not money from inheritance. That's nothing that is money for my work and putting something out there um, and receiving the first campaigns with brands. So when I launched this, it was in 2010. I was really struggling from the from the recession that had quit my job um, a year before it started because I wanted to be a stay at home mom and my now ex husband lost all his clients and we were really in the worst situation you can imagine. Um, but I had ten dollars to start a blog, you know, to put to put out a WordPress.com host and and to ha get some friends and ask for help and put a logo and et cetera and use Google Docs to put out a list saying if you're a blogger and you want to work with brands, I will I will make that happen. And I utilized my resources um, that I already had as a blogger for two years already and the contacts that I had made um, to really capitalize on those contacts and bring in forward campaigns 
um, with brands. So we started out with Sprint and Neutrogena and et cetera, and then it just exploded. So from that, it was really self-funded based on campaign to campaign, which is hard because you really can't put together a PNL for the rest for the year because you don't know what's going to come in. You really are praying every month that you're going to sign those contracts and that you're going to hustle and that you're going to get it done, but you really don't know. So it's really difficult to grow like that. It's really difficult to take risks and then and invest in hiring a team, et cetera. I didn't hire my first team member until 10 months into the company. So um, after that, within a few years, I got my actual first um, loan, but it was a non-traditional loan, not from a bank because it's a service-based business that doesn't have collateral to put forward um, for a bank loan. So that is very, you know, that and traditionally black and Latinx founders and indigenous founders are not receiving those bank loans, right? We have to go through a lot of hoops. So I got it through Cabbage. And um, that was actually something incredible. I started looking at an, another ways of, of, of being able to get lines of credit. So I got, I, it was basically lines of credits and an amazing American Express card. <laughs> so it was all debt funded and it's been debt funded and we've never, you know, never had, had a problem with that have always been able to make our commitments and the company continues to be self-funded till this date. Amazing. Amazing. I love it. That's, that's the type of pull back the curtain stuff that we need access to. And, and Anna, I, I am always so in awe of your transparency and just um, genuineness to show people that this is not easy. This is not no. something that um, anybody should just jump into. No, it's hard I, feel, and I, know, it's I faced bankruptcy. I, I mean, I faced it all, but, um, but we're still here and we do it because Oh, and Elisa was saying our, our spirit of resilience and perseverance and that we know that, you know, that we've started something that we've, that we've carved a space in this, in, you know, a kind of like an uncommon path, a difficult path, and we need to continue going. Um, we, we, we see that we know, we see the power of this community and we have to, you know, to stand strong. I mean, I truly appreciate what Anna is saying just because it, it makes me feel okay, I'm not alone in this. There's so many times, I mean, we're, we're re relatively young um, in comparison, but there's so many moments where you just want to pack up your bags and be like, I'm done. You know, I can't Every year? Earlier. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, I could just go on and, and, and get like some, a, a nine to five, have something a little bit more steady. But as we we're all discussing, I think our mission and our goal for our communities is just so important that, you know, we don't want to leave that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Awesome. Um, I think another key piece of this is kind of building community, building that network. And somebody said, had asked the question, when's the, when do you know when it's the right time to crowdfund? And I think first and foremost, it's when you know what you're going to crowdfund for, what's your bigger vision for this business? And then what does the first step of that look like? If you know, you want to ultimately build out an app, um, you kind of need customers who are going to use that app. So build out, build out a community for the people who are going to want to use the app. If you need to manufacture the first line of your product, um, you need potential customers who are going to want to buy, buy that product. And so community really is kind of that first step. Anna did it with a blog um, of starting to put this idea out th there and prove it, prove it out. And so I'm, I want to hear from each of you kind of what has your network building strategy been for you um, and how have you really turn that into a community around your business. Um, uh, Anna, I'll, I'll take it back to you. Okay, yeah. So when it was Latina Bloggers Connect, it was a community of bloggers. It really was um, because there, we were the first ones to bring us together and bringing us together, it was twofold. It was one, to be able to, um, monet to help them monetize because I realized then that I didn't want to go back to TV production life, even though I was getting amazing gigs. I was like, no, I always wanted to come back to my little blog, which back then was Spanglish Baby for parents raising bilingual and bicultural kids. And to do that, I knew that I needed to monetize. And to mon if I needed to monetize, I wanted to make sure also that the other Latina bloggers that we were finding each other via Twitter and via comments, et cetera, that um, they would also get the chance to monetize because I knew that if we were able to do that, then our voices were really going to be heard and our stories were going to be told. So that started as a community of, okay, if this, we're all new in this space, this is a new space, how are we going to help each other figure out SEO, figure out how to pitch, how to negotiate? You know, we, we were 
we were we were creating those opportunities and bringing those resources to that community while also um, working with the brands to be able to monetize and, and, and bring them um, financial opportunities. And that just continued to grow. So we've at, it just what has changed and shifted and um, has been our focus with the community, because like my event was saying, what we always say that our secret sauce is that we listen, we deeply listen to what the community wants, what they need and where they're at. So when we launched We All Grow Summit in 2015, our first summit, it was focused on the blogger and influencer content creator um, uh, uh, community. But within the second year, we had people, because it was such an Instagramable, Instagram, Instagramable I can't speak, um, event, we were getting people reaching out to us and saying like, I am not a blogger, I'm not a YouTuber, but I feel that this is a community that speaks to me. Can I be part of the event? We were like, of course. So we started opening it up and that meant shifting the programming, shifting the content to make sure that we were meeting the needs. And then what became 2016, 2017 was really when entrepreneurship started booming within the Latina space. Why? Because we had more access to e-commerce, to you know the different platforms like Shopify, et cetera, Instagram that allowed us to bring forth and sell our businesses. So it's just give us the tools and we're gonna show up, right? So that's, so that's where we continuously and still now when we had to cancel our summit, our biggest one, of course, last year, two months before, because it was in May and we had to cancel it mid-March, mid, uh, um, we, we realized that the mighty network that we have had, had since 2018, we had opened it up for free and we realized that the first thing that we needed to do, even though we were facing closing the company, we survived thanks to the PPP and the SBA loans last year, but we were facing closing the company. Um, we realized that even if while we had to juggle, are we going to be able to sustain ourselves and, and keep the doors open? We needed to be there for the community first and foremost. So creating content for them, creating opportunities to meet, coaching sessions, office hours, et cetera. So they're, they're, we, we are nothing without community. That is, that is who we are. That's a fact. And um, I'm taking a look at the time. So I kind of want to just break down a little bit what Anna shared. Um, first and foremost is you need to you need to start very specific. You specifically went to Latina bloggers um, and, and listened to the pain points that they had and then created a space where everybody could serve each other's pain points by leveraging their expertise. And then you were able to expand from there. So I think people get nervous about starting too small because they're like, well, I don't want to cut so-and-so out and I don't want to cut so-and-so out. But at some point, the people who are you, who you're looking to serve need to know that you're even talking about them mm -hmm. and that it's, it's for them. And then you can grow and expand from there. Um, and then also they're going to be willing to pivot with you in whatever direction you go because they understand that you are here to drive value. So I think that's super important. Um, and I want to make sure we wrap it on your time. So I want to give each of you the opportunity to let, let our community and the people on the line know how can we support you? How can we show up for you? Um, and Mary Beth, I'll start with you. Um, so I would say I, I would ask everyone to take this month to sort of familiarize yourself with various Hispanic and Latinx brands and businesses um, and then, you know, support them. Uh, not just during these 30 days, but year round. Uh, to those who identify as Hispanic and Latinx, our identities don't disappear after 30 days. You know, we carry it with us. So continue to support our communities throughout, um, whether it's by sharing um, their, their brands and businesses or tagging them um, in different posts that you would see that might relate to them, leaving reviews, purchasing. I mean, all of this helps and, and just try and do it year round, not just during this these 30 days. <laughs> awesome. Elisa, I'll go to you next. I'm here nodding. Oh, can we have 30 more minutes, please? <laughs> I know. So much to say, so much to share. Um, Maribet, I really love what you said and, and definitely echo what you're asking our communities uh, to do for us and even for other um, Latinx and mm -hmm. Hispanic businesses. In addition to that, um, for Covidosa, you know, first things first, right? Um, follow us at Covidosa on Instagram. And then secondly, um, say hi. I love talking. I will send you voice messages. I, I am not shy. So we can chat. I'm all ears. And also, uh, Covidosa actually launched a Latinx and Hispanic collection. Um, so you can go to covidosa.com, check it out. You buy um, any of our products to represent your culture and, and really our community. Um, and with that being said, uh, also, like it was mentioned, if you all have been a customer of Covidosa, don't be afraid to go to the website and leave a review. Reviews are very, very important for us small businesses, and it will help the 
your customer make a more informed decision. So do all of those things um, and we would really appreciate you. Amazing. And um, Shaquilla, our marketing manager, is dropping all of their handles in the chat. So you can go ahead and give them a follow. And Anna will wrap up with you. I mean, everything they said, it is just so easy. It really is easy. If you're going to spend your dollars, do it consciously. Go, go. We have three directories that you can check out on our website. We have a, a directory for Afro Latina businesses, small businesses. We have a directory of just um, Latinx, Latina, sorry, small businesses. And we have a directory of Latinas in the food industry. So it's super easy for you to be able to find, go to any of their, um, of, um, like Mujeriz is always also sharing small businesses to support, et cetera. And it really is that easy. Put your dollars on us, invite us to speak. Thank you so much, Olivia, for this. Yeah. Open up your platforms for us, not only during Hispanic Latinx Heritage Month, but like Marivette was saying throughout the whole year, bring us, bring us open your doors to us and listen to us really listen to us and then even little small things just to know how easy it is when you see a sponsor post from any of us like it share it because that is what's going to help us continue to bring right. in the funds as well right just because you liked something you shared it you have no idea how much that is helping the same as leaving a review those little moments a minute a few seconds can make a huge difference for a small business Amazing. I mean, the action items are clear, crystal. Let's get to it. If you are curious about getting started with crowdfunding on iPhone Women, slide in our DMs um, and we will get you in the right direction to get started. Want to give another plug for that caress opportunity. Um, again, make sure you get your campaign up before the end of the month, raising funds so you can be in the running um, and, and follow along. We'll be continuing to amplify different businesses on iPhone Women that you can fund um, to support as well. So thank you again to Anna, Mary Vet, and Elisa for your time. Um, and can't wait till the next time. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you all for joining. Amazing. Oh. Have a nice rest of your day, everyone. Bye. Take care.